Okay, so this is where we left off in class. We are in activity 12. We're going to get the sprite to move left and right. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and do the up and down, left and right all together because it's essentially this all the same stuff. So to move the player up, we're going to do key down up, and it's going to be player.y gets, we're going to do our counter pattern here. So player.y gets player.y. Now, if we're moving up, what's happening to our y values as we go up? So if you look there, it's 244. As we go up, it gets to 80. So it's decreasing on the way up. We're going to do minus, and I'm going to do a speed of 3. So he's a little bit faster than our um, than the ladybugs. The ladybugs are moving with the speed of 2. So if he moves with the speed of 3, I should be able to catch them. It's going to be player.y gets player.y plus 3 on the way down and then we've got player.x gets player.x we're going left so that's this way so if you look at our x's 350 down to 76 so we're getting more negative and then our last one is going to be player.x gets player.x plus 3. so now when we run our code we should be able to move our player around the screen and again, he can go way up here and off the screen and come down off the, off the bridge. That's not what we're concerned about. We're just doing and making him so he moves um, across the screen. We'll do the interaction here in a minute with the enemies. But for right now, uh, what else do we want to change about him? So the, the cool thing is we can actually push you know, down and left, down and right, up and right. Um, and get him to move diagonally, but do I want him to be moonwalking backward here? Probably not. So I would say anytime I move him left, I also want to, good, change the animation so he's looking left. So I'm gonna do player dot set animation and do walk left. And then if I do that, he'll go left, but then if I push right, he moonwalks backward to the right. So we need to do the same thing. And do the walk right. Now you might be thinking to yourself, do I need to do it for the up and down? And I'd say no, if, you, if you're already facing right, when you move up and down, you still look right. If you go left and you go up and down, you still look left. So it will change based on your left and right not based on your up and down. So we don't need to have an animation set here. We can just set it in the left and right keys that we're working with. So that actually takes care of, I think, 12 and 13. Um, it's going to have you um, move it left and right. Um, so we'll finish that. Let's see what 13 it wants us to do. Um, so it wants us to do up and down. Okay, so 13 is what we suspected it's going to just do the up and down keys. So we've already done that. So now we've got up and down, left and right. We should be able to move our sprite fully around our board. Now, if we wanted our, our guy to stop right here, we can actually do that. Um, if we look at his, the value, it's from the middle of the sprite. So the value of the Y coordinate in the middle of him is around, let's say 240. And if you click on the debug sprites, you can actually see what that coordinate is right there, 233. And we can also create a watcher if we wanted to. Um, so if I show this and I did player dot Y, it actually will give me the value of player dot Y. And if I move him up, so I could really have him go all the way to about here and still be on the roadway. So we could do an if statement inside of here uh, for the up and down to not allow him to go past a certain point. So we could say if player.y is, so this is going up. So if it's greater than this value, then we can go up. Okay, so if it's greater than uh, 119 now go up if you press the up button if if you press the up button and it's less than that so if it's up here 
You know, now he's at 116. I can't go up any further. Um, so now let's rerun it. So now it should hit a top edge here. Look at that. And he can't go beyond that top edge. And if I want to get him so he can only go to here, can't go down in the water. So again, that's uh, 233. So think about that. What do I need to create? If player.y is less than 233, then allow him, oops, then allow him to go down. If it's not, then he's, he can't go down any further. So there we go. We've bounded him onto that bridge. It's kind of a cool little trick. I don't think it's in the curriculum, but I think it's worthwhile so that your guy can't go beyond that. Now, you can also do the same thing over here. Like, see how he can disappear this direction? So maybe we don't want him to go past this. So that's um, a player.x value. So that's 20 right now. So we could do the same thing on his x value. So we could say if player.x is greater than 20, then what is he allowed to do? He's allowed to go right. If he's less than 20, then he doesn't get to go right. But this is if he's greater than 20. Oh, I'm sorry. Not right. This is left. So I need to move that. So here we go. Let's move this back out. We're going to move this if statement to this one. So if it's greater than 20, he can go left. Bingo. So now let's try it. So now this should bound him to this side. Look at that. Can't go any further this direction. Can't go up. Can't go down. He can still go beyond the cake and out this way. So maybe we have him when he touches the cake. So if he's touching the cake, he can't go this direction anymore. So right, you could say if, and then we can do touching cake. So we can say if player is touching cake. Now, this is if he's touching cake, do something else, go right. So this would stop him. This would allow him to go right if we did an else statement. So we could do an else and put this in the else and do nothing in the if. Because now if he's touching the cake, he can't go any further. So the cake kind of blocks him. See that? Blocks him there. Oh, he can get up on top of the cake here. Okay. So he still can kind of, because see the cake ends, you know, kind of right here. You can see kind of that, you know, the bounding box of that's bright. Um, the other way to do it, so you don't have this structure, is usually you put this on the side of here and then use a not symbol. So a not symbol is an exclamation mark. So if he is not touching the cake, so this acts the same way. Go right if he's not touching the cake. If he's touching the cake, he can't go right. Boom. So this is a this is an addition. You don't have to add those in there, those boundaries. But I wanted to show you those because I think it makes your game more realistic in the end. So again, you can pause it. You can go back. You can rewind. You can put these back in. But these are now if statements inside of if statements to control whether or not your player actually moves left or right or up or down depending on situationally where he is at. Um, oh, this is flipping. So this is um, flipping the animation so that he's looking left and right depending on uh, pushing left or right. And we've already done that. We did that here with the set animation walk left and the set animation walk right. So we've actually already completed that task. 15. Uh, we're going to displace enemies. So the nice thing is, is you could use the sprite debug command to see colliders, or uh, when you run it, you can actually just click on this button and you can see the colliders. 
So I don't like the fact that these are all squares. Um, you're going to see why that is here in just a minute. So I'm going to go into the displace enemies and we want to say that that the player displaces enemy one and the player displaces enemy two. And now when I run it, look at that. See, I can like stop them. Now they're going to disappear for good because they went off the screen and they didn't touch the cake. So because they didn't touch the cake, they didn't reset. But I'm actually going to change my collider types. So I'm going to go way up to the beginning and change my collider. So I'm going to do a set collider for my player. So player dot set collider. I'm going to make it a circle. I'm going to do the same thing for my collider for my enemies. And the reason I will is because now you can't actually pin the enemies with your sprite. It'll actually roll off of him, which is kind of fun. So if I show your debug now, see how they, see how they roll off the top? You can't actually pin them. So see that? It rolls off the bottom. It makes it a lot harder. Um, to stop you have to be like right on them to get them to stop but see that it kind of moves around your sprite now um, I could change the the size of this so if I don't like how big this is for my uh, for my character um, I can shrink these circles a little bit so how do you do that well if you expand I'm gonna do my player here. This is the X. This is the Y offset. So those are going to be zeros to offset those. But then the next one is my radius. And right now my radius is probably 25. I'm going to knock it down to 20. And reset, rerun. And you can see that I'm a much smaller radius now um, as I push these things off. I'm going to make the uh, ladybugs collider just a little bit smaller as well so again I'm going to expand those out and expand this out so this is zero zero and then the next one's the radius and you're like well how do you know that well if you rub over this it tells you it says you've got the type an x offset y offset radius so uh, the radius for these I'm going to probably make 12 we're going to see what that does. And run it. And so there we go. Got a little bit smaller radius on those guys. Um, so that they're more over the body and not kind of beyond the body of, of that. That's how I like the colliders to be in this. You can change them how you want, but to me that's, but that's good. Enemies touch water. So, if the enemy is on top of the bridge, so if its Y value is below 140, then we're going to add one to score, and we're going to use the set enemy function to reset him back to the beginning. So, we'll do one, and then you can do the other one together. So, here we go. We need an if statement. If enemy 1.y is less than 140 we're going to call a function it's called set enemy 1 let's run it so if I displace I got to displace him up there he goes disappeared disappeared now it looks like 140 is not high enough Okay, so going below doesn't work. So I'm going to change that a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing for the enemy two. And I'm going to do if they go greater than this value, 